Hey, class is going to start in less than 10 minutes, but I just wanted to come on here and explain what we're doing today, and maybe I'll be able to pop in throughout the day. I'm not sure. So yesterday, which was Monday, we finished two worksheets, uh, one to do with King Arthur motifs and the other one to do with quotes from the book. I, we're reading Freak the Mighty, by the way. I don't know if I ever said that. We're reading Freak the Mighty. Uh, so the paper was front and back. One side is King Arthur motifs. The other side was uh, quotes and figuring out who said the quotes and what their points were, like what, what was the point of the quote. We also started their chapter six through 10 quiz. We're gonna finish the quiz today and we're also going to move on to our next set of chapters. So the next set of chapters are chapters 11 through 15 or 16. So we're gonna start 11 and 12 hopefully today, finish up the quiz. My foundational or basic group, they're gonna do uh, report forms, which is a reading intervention. Um, and then with my honors class, we're gonna do Zinc. I've been wanting to get on here and talk for a little bit because I have a lot of thoughts on my co-teaching situation. And I think that's a lot of interesting information uh, to share, especially because I was kind of thrown into it. So at some point, I'll probably talk about that maybe today, maybe in another, maybe in another video. Sorry, I'm talking fast because I'm trying to have some time to set up for class. Um, but yeah, so that's today. I'll see if we have a we have a messed up schedule today. So flex is at the beginning of the day instead of at the end. So I have less time to like take breaks. So I will see you probably at planning. We'll see. If you need an example of how atrophied my brain is right now, I fully thought it was Wednesday, and I completely thought we had our modified Wednesday schedule. Anyway, it's lunchtime, and I have stew that we made two days ago, and I'm so excited. I have this uh, like bento soup thing. Uh, it's very nice. The problem is, is that my stew keeps, I guess, leaking or spilling over, not really for the fault of the container, more because I am packing everything up so quickly in the morning that I just, it's being tossed around and thrown and whatever. I really like it. It keeps it very, very warm. So I don't even have to go heat anything up. I have the second half of this class and I have one more class and then I have flex so the day is almost done this went by pretty quickly when people ask me how my day it went uh, a nine times out of ten I will say subpar not because it's bad but because that's the level that I need to reach to feel like it was a successful day here's my thing and th my brain works in mysterious ways if I am aiming for good or like great on a day-to-day -day teaching basis. Like every single day that I teach, if I'm aiming for good, um, I'm more likely going to be disappointed because most of my days are just okay. But subpar to me is like, well, it's not great, but it was fine. I think one of the reasons why a lot of new teachers get burnt out so quickly, I mean, there's a bunch of reasons, but one of the reasons is because we're always looking for a good day, or like a great day or a positive day. But I think if you set yourself up at subpar, <laughs> if you set yourself up for, I'm just looking for an okay day or a fine day, you are more likely to have more good days. Editing this back, and I realized I didn't really explain myself super well. So basically what I meant is if you go into every single day saying, I'm gonna have a great day, or I'm gonna have a good day. In teaching, realistically, most of your days are just gonna be just okay or just fine. Having the every day is gonna be a good day or every day is gonna be a great day, it always makes me feel more negative at the end of the day because it makes me pick out the things that were not super great that happened in that given day. Versus if I go into every day saying, I just want a subpar day or I just want a fine day, I'm more looking for the positives because I'm saying, okay, well, we started off pretty low, but then this happened and that made it better. And then something else happened and that made it a little bit more good or a little bit better. Hopefully that helped explain it a little bit, but it's, it's just how my brain works. I don't even know if it makes a difference or if it makes sense to other people, but that's just, it helps me go through every day feeling a little bit more uh, positive about how the school day is summarized in my head, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but that's just, it's worked for me. I found that if I set myself up to just say it's going to be a subpar day, then I typically come out of every school day okay. I am looking for my lipstick. That's why I'm digging around like a, a pouch. 
Uh, I think I took it out though. So let's talk about what I did today. So all my classes took a quiz today. Um, in front of me I have only the key for the academic and the honors quiz and the actual quiz for the modified uh, basic and foundational levels. So I don't have everything I'm about to talk about with me. But so we are on chapters six through 10 of Freak the Mighty. We read or listened to the book and now we, we took notes and now we're taking the quiz. So this is the modified version. Uh, as you can see, they only have two or three choices. The font is a lot bigger. Um, I mean, we read it out loud for them. We didn't read it out loud for the academic or the honors. And there's only really one written response. It was open note. All of my classes have open note tests, even the honors class, because honestly, I'm not sure that many of my students in any of my levels would do great without open notes. Um, <clears throat> I'm not trying to trick them. Like I want them to do well. So, and to be honest, if you've never taught, I guess, you wouldn't think about it but if you give them the notes word for word that they're gonna see on the quiz and you say you say this is what's gonna be on the quiz you can have this paper while you're taking the quiz several students will still probably get a C which you're kind of like well, how do you get a C when the answer is literally right next to you students have a hard time I found taking the quiz and then looking at their notes and saying and transferring the information over. So saying, okay, number one is asking me who Tony D is. So let me go over to my notes page, see who Tony D is, and then bring it back over to the quiz. They have a hard time transferring that information over. I'm not sure what it is. I'm not sure why they do, but they just do. Anyway, so this was the modified version for my basic slash foundational class. Basically the difference with honors, my honors class is I can have them do more of the classwork independently or as table groups and with the academic i have to do a little bit more hand holding so the academic and honors test uh this is the key so it has the answers on here but um we have a multiple choice section we have a fill in the blank section with a word bank of characters and then on the back we have uh more constructive response. So this is four, five, five constructive response. The original version of this test uh, that my team typically used was, I think, a packet. It was like two pages and it was pretty much all constructive response. If we did a quiz that was pretty much all constructive response, A, they wouldn't do well, and B, it would literally take them forever. To do this front and back quiz, which is 15 questions and five of the 15 are constructive response, to do this, it took them a class period and a half. So it took them a class period and a half to do it being open note. But oh my God, it was a mess. And this group that we have are so, they're so, so chatty and they're really, really hard to reel back in. Um, so now I'm doing this thing, I'm doing table points now, where not necessarily to deal with the chatting, but to deal with the uh, going back out into the hallway to get your materials. Uh, my middle schoolers don't bring their backpacks into the classroom, which I like, honestly. I would rather deal with them going back in the hallway to get their stuff than having their backpacks all over the classroom. But a lot of them at the beginning of class asked to go get stuff from their locker. So now I'm doing table points, um, A, for uh, who can conduct themselves the best, but mostly it's who has their materials at the start of class. I mean, it's more inexcusable for my first period because my first period is my homeroom, so they should all have their things. I don't know why it's so hard for them to do that. I don't Anyway, that's what we did today. Yesterday we did this quote formative paper. I made this myself. Um, we pulled quotes from the chapters, chapters six through 10. Uh, they had to write down who said the quote and then they also had to explain the quote. Again, this is the thing that was open note. This is formative classwork. I feel like when I was in middle school or when I was in high school, if a teacher gave us this and it even has the the chapter and the page numbers on there. If a teacher gave us this, they would expect us to do it 
with the first time, like this is just the first and only time we would get something like this. And we would have to look in the chapter and find the page. The way I had them do it, and this was, this paper was also modified for each grade level and I can tell you how I did that in a second. But each uh, quote is a quote that they've seen before. They had a notes sheet with every single one of these quotes. They had 10 quotes, I think, or, or nine quotes. I picked five of them. They saw these quotes before. They have a pink note sheet. They have the note sheet sitting right next to them while they're doing this. Um, from the ones that I've graded so far, most people are getting a nine and a half-ish, and the half point off is just because I guess they get lazy and don't feel like writing the entire explanation. But oh my god, do you see handwriting? It's stressing me out. I told my kids, I was like, if I cannot read your handwriting, you're just not going to get the point. Because you might as well have not written anything down if I cannot read it. And the thing is, is, they can't read their own handwriting either. If I stick a piece of paper, this is not bad handwriting in relation to everyone else's handwriting. If I give them their paper back and say, what did you write here? They don't know either. <laughs> so I think they're sleep writing. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the best handwriting either. But God, I can at least read what I wrote. <laughs> So let me quickly explain how I modified this paper for each of the different levels. So you have the character column, the quote column, and the explanation column. This is the academic version of this paper. In the academic and the honors papers, you have to fill in the character yourself. So you have to pick from the list of characters that we have basically met throughout the story and write them down yourself. The explanation, again, you have to write it down yourself. They basically copied from a note sheet that they had. So this is it was not impossible in the slightest. And then the quotes section changes a little bit. So everyone had the same exact quotes because we used the same quotes. But for the academic and the foundational, we put the chapter and the page number. We didn't really expect them to go back and look at the page and look at the chapter, but they were there just as another level of, hey, remember, we looked at this before. For the foundational and basic classes, we gave them three character options. So we would say Freak or Max or Graham, for example, or Tony D and Graham or the cops. Uh, so we would give them the three options, they would just circle it. Again, it would have the chapter and the page number, and they would have to completely do the explanation themselves. For honors, it looks pretty much the same. They have to do the characters themselves. They have to do the explanation themselves, but it just doesn't have this chapter and page number um, subtitle here, subcaption. I didn't really think it was a big, I big deal because again, they have seen these quotes before, but I gave it to my honors class and they were really stressed out because they didn't know what page or anything it was on, but their notes page has the chapter and the page on it anyways. I don't, they stress out about the weirdest things. So anyway, it's my planning now. I just have to grade those. Uh, formative things that I just showed you and that's about it. Oh, co-teaching. So I'm co-teaching with a reading interventionist and it's been great. Honestly, she taught, I took her position basically, which was uh, I was concerned about going into this. So my whole hiring process was just a mess. But basically, I applied for secondary social studies positions, ended up getting a call for this position, which is secondary ELA, uh, which I was not super stoked about because I don't particularly love or care for ELA. Um, it's just not the topic that I am interested in um, and not the topic I think I'm getting my master's in, which is a whole nother story. So I took her position. And she's great, honestly. Um, I know she co-teaches with a couple, other, a couple other people in the building, which from what I hear, isn't going as well as we work together, which is fine because if it works well for me, that's all I ask for. But she is one of those people that has tons and tons of materials. She is uh, super okay uh, letting me do things. I mean, she should be because I'm the lead teacher but I know that there are some co-teachers that are not as flexible. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm having a really good, good experience with co-teaching. I know most people probably don't, I'm doing fine. It's also so great to have a second adult in the classroom for every class except my honors, um, because I can step out, I can have a chat with some students, I can ask her to take some students, 
it's really great. I really enjoy it. Um, if you can do co-teaching and you are either willing to take the risk to work with someone um, that you don't know, or you have the choice of who to work with, uh, I would recommend it. It's pretty nice. If you have any specific questions about co-teaching, let me know. Um, I was gonna make a whole video about it, but God, if I can't even make a single video for one month, it's, I don't know. I mean, I've been making a lot of those really, really short, like one minute videos recently. And the funny thing is, is that I keep filming little clips for things. And then, like I did it a couple weeks ago, I filmed some clips over the course of a day of like my day. Um, and I was like, okay, so this will make like a five minute video, which is kind of where I like to shoot for five or six minute video for those like walking vlog type things. I went and I edited it and I think I ended up uploading it. I don't remember what it was specifically right now. And it was literally still a minute long. <laughs> I was like, where is all the footage going? Oh my God. But the thing is, is I do a lot of repetitive clips. So I cut them down a lot because no one wants to see me walking or racing a board for 30 seconds. Uh, so that's where all my time goes. One thing I'm really, really happy about my school is that they do not make me do anything. I'm in a committee. I have not done a single thing for that committee because no one's asked me and that's fine. No one's asked me to head a club. No one's asked me to be a coach for anything. Oh my God, I love my life. I also want to mention I live very far away from where I work. And so let's say for example, it, well, it's just an hour after school, right? To do some sort of after school activity. Yeah, it's an hour after school, but then I have to drive 45 minutes to get home. So instead of getting home at 4, I get home at 5 or 5.30. And I... that's just too late. That's it. <laughs> it's too late <laughs> to be doing all that. Anyway, that's it. Hope that was interesting. If you have any questions about anything or you want me to go more in depth on anything, let me know. Co-teaching modifying, classwork, anything like that. How I grade, I don't know. Let me know.